Okay, I'm back here with part two in my response to Jeff's top 15 reasons why Vince McMahon sucks. But, like I was mentioning at the end, it's kind of like a certain comic book of mine that I like, a certain favorite comic book of mine, Sonic the Hitchhawk. You know, there's 50% of people, 50% of that fan base that loves that comic, that likes reading that comic, that doesn't like the way the comic is right now. They don't like the current storyline. They don't like the way the characters are portrayed. And then you got the other 50% that's like, hey, I like the way the characters are portrayed. Hey, I like the way the stories are. And basically you got a split thing there. And maybe the percentage is maybe more so by 10%. Okay, let's put it that way. Maybe they're over by 10% over the majority that likes it the way it is. The truth is, com the truth is when you look at that, that's the same way as looking at what WWE is going through right now. And just like, with w just like with Vince McMahon, those at Archie Comics, those that write the book, those that are in charge, they don't realize that that percentage, that percentage that's, that's, that's even with the other percentage, it's even with that other percentage, they don't realize that that percentage it's even with that percentage, and it's always not more so, or it's over by 10% over the other percentage, they don't realize that that percentage is what's carrying them and making them money. And that's the same thing with Vince McMahon. He doesn't realize that that 6%, that 60%, that's, according to Richard Gray, that's making the most money for him right now, well, he should be trying to cater to that than to the 40% that he's catering to. That's the whole scenario right there. And again, strange comparisons, some people may say, but when you look at the Sonic Day Child comic book or any comic book that has a split fan base, the same thing can be said. Things, same thing can be said. Same thing can be said, folks. Same thing can be said. Almost. Almost. And then, then Jeff, you talk about Linda McMahon and her Senate campaign back in 10 and, and 12. And I thought it was maybe before that, too. That is another one of the reasons we're stuck in the damn PG era that people are disdaining as we speak. Because of Linda McMahon's campaign for Senate, we're stuck in this era. And until Linda McMahon either wins the Senate seat or finally decides, you know what, I'm never going to get into Senate, that would be one of the other, that to me would be another one of the reasons, another one of the reasons, reasons. Isn't it would be a wake-up call for Vince McMahon and if not for the board of directors. Because that way they'd be realizing, hey, she's never going to get in the Senate, or hey, she's finally in the Senate. Let's, let's, try to loosen, let's try to get loose again. Let's try to get back to the way we were. Excuse me for a second. But that's basically what it is. family-friendly. Another reason why in the PG rating, WWE, not just because of Linda McMahon's campaign and not just because Stephanie McMahon's head of creative, but it's also due to the fact that they want their sponsors. That's right. They want to have sponsors just like the NFL has, just like UFC has, just like, uh, just like the NBA, the Major League Baseball, 
They want sponsors. They want sponsors like, say, 7-Eleven. They want sponsors like Kmart. They want sponsors like Walmart. They want sponsors like McDonald's, Burger King, Jack in a Box. You know, they want all these sponsors, you know, to, you know, to support them. They want Slim Jim. They want all these sponsors. I mean, why do you think sometimes at the beginning of a pay-per-view or a special event, like let's say Tribute to the Troops, or a pay-per-view like WrestleMania, that they always say, uh, they always say something like Slim Jim and WWE, or they say something like, they say something like Kmart and WWE, or they say something like McDonald's and WWE present. It's because that's the purpose. They want those sponsors. But they've had sponsors, Jeff. And you know it, they've had sponsors even when they did TV-14. But it's because of that, but it's because of the fact that they want all the major sponsors, it's because of the fact that Linda McMahon Senate campaigns going on, and also due to the fact that Stephanie McMahon is relying more on the Hollywood writers than anything else, that the WWE is in the PG era, and that's another clue to the Vin point that Vince McMahon needs to move on. He needs to step down, because... If he finally steps down, maybe somebody like Triple H possibly might step up and say, you know what, enough of this PG crap, let's go back to what made us what we were. I mean, why do you think certain wrestlers and divas, when they get released, or they ask for the release, why do you think they're so happy to leave? Why do you think they're so freaking happy to leave? Because they're free to be themselves, they're free to say what they want to say. Why do you think Dave Bautista, despite how you feel about him, doesn't want to come back? Because he wants things back to that TV-14 portion. He wants TV-14 back. He wants that attitude. He wants that aggression side back. Why do you think the Hardys left? They want to go back to TV-14. That's one of the reasons. That's why a lot of them are leaving. They want more freedom. They want the WWE to be what it was, not what it is. I mean, I guarantee you, if word came out one of these days, if news rang out, breaking news rang out, rang out, or rang out one of these days, saying that WWE's going to go back to its attitude error, go back to being TV 14, I guarantee you, not only would fans be happy about that, but a lot of those wrestlers and divas that left, they'd be like, oh, WWE's back to being attitude, they're back to being 14, let's go back. I guarantee you that's what will happen. I guarantee it. I guarantee you that's exactly what would freaking happen. And you know it, Jeff, and I know it. Now, I'll give you one reason you didn't bring up, Jeff. It may seem a little, it may seem like a, re, a non- it may seem like a reason that not, doesn't need to be addressed, but I'll give you another reason, Jeff. The reason that Vince McMahon needs to step down and move on and enjoy his life or what's left of it. ECW. In 2005, for one night only, he brought back ECW the way we liked it. And then in 2006, he brought it back again as a relaunching of the brand and ECW. And at first it seemed to have some potential. Yeah, it got saturated with some WWE guys like Kurt Angle and Big Show. But they embraced, but give them credit, they embraced the ECW style. They embraced Paul Heyman's way of thinking. But what happened? What happened? Only a few weeks later, Paul Heyman starts listening to Vince McMahon, screws RVD out of the ECW title. Now, some people will say the reason they did that was because RVD, got, RVD and Sabu were, read, were pulled over due to marijuana position. Okay, that's understandable. That's understandable. But then, you think, okay, they're still going extreme, they still have these ECW matches, there's, there's still no rules, blah, blah, blah. But then, then you get to December to dismember. The only ECW pay-per-view under the WWE brand. You get to December to dismember, and what happens? Words run out, words ringing out that Vince McMahon's taking over.
the ECW brand. That he's ousted Paul Heyman as the head of the ECW brand. And why? Because Paul Heyman wanted to do something one way, Vince McMahon wanted it to be done another. And what happened? Vince McMahon got his way, Paul Heyman, storyline-wise, had to step down on, ca on camera, storyline-wise, had to step down off camera and away from the brand. And eventually be released. So what does that tell you, folks? That tells you that Vince McMahon doesn't know what he's doing. And it was after that, it was after that, folks, that we never again saw extreme, we never again saw things like Bob Warrior or Thumbtacks in an ECW match or an Extreme Rules match. We never saw those again. All we ever saw were trash cans. All we ever saw were ladders and chairs. Not saying those aren't effective, but still, we never saw what made ECW ECW anymore. In fact, when WWE HD in 2009, the ECW set, under Vince McMahon's guidance, went from being that brick set that it had to being kind of like a little set with little, you know, with the, a, a different set, still kind of ECW-like, but a little bit more WWE style. And then suddenly 2009 comes around and they just have the same fucking HD Tron as SmackDown and Raw. But pretty much by 2009, ECW, the way we knew it, <laughs> dead. And all thanks to the fact that Vince McMahon doesn't understand that a certain demographic of fans want things a certain way. I mean, why do you think anytime WWE invades Philadelphia for a show, whether it's a live event, a pay-per-view, or a Raw or a SmackDown, why do you think that Philadelphia fans, anytime they get anything, that, anything that resembles an ECW style like match, whether it's Extreme Rules or No Disqualification or Street Fights, why do you think they cheer ECW? Why do you think they chant ECW? Because that's the style they're used to. And in a way, they're trying to tell Vince McMahon, this is what we want. But Vince McMahon doesn't understand that. He doesn't get it. He, it. It doesn't register in his brain that this is what the fans want. This is what they want. And then, and then, one of the biggest things of all, you've got several baby faces, several baby faces, like John Cena to top them off. John Cena to top them off, if you will, on the top of that list. Even Rey Mysterio and a few others to be named. You have all these baby faces, and yet you don't take the chance to basically turn them heel when you have the opportunity. You don't have the opportunity to turn them heel when you do. I mean, right now, you have an opportunity with John Cena and Kane to turn John Cena heel, or make him more aggressive and more heelish like. You don't take that opportunity. Instead, what do you do? You take someone like Daniel Bryan, you turn him heel. And that guy's a natural babyface in some ways. You got someone like Rey Mysterio. I mean, in your WWE 12 game, your WWE 12 game, you turned him freaking heel in the last story arc of Road to WrestleMania. You turned him freaking heel. And yet you don't do that in real life? And you like, take a look at Kelly Kelly and Eve. You got potential right now with Eve turning to heel. Or maybe even AJ turning to heel. And Kelly Kelly possibly as a possibility. But yet do you do that? No! You don't do that. And Jeff, I think you would agree, these are opportunities that he has missed. 